Hey, Megan, thank you so much for joining me. How are you today? Good. Thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to our conversation. It's absolutely my pleasure. Would you like to start a little bit with your story, maybe first? Sure. Yeah, I can do that. That's always a good way to just get right in there. Yeah, right. Why not? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, I am from Mississippi originally. Actually, my family's from Kentucky. We moved to Mississippi when I was, I think, seven, eight years old. And I begrudgingly came to Mississippi because I was just uh, didn't like change. I was scared of being in a school without my older brother and my younger brother mm -hmm. and just coming to a new culture altogether, I think was just a really scary concept. I remember um, when we first got here, my mom had to come to school every day for two weeks and hold me while I cried through the day. Oh, no. <laughs> So I was absolutely terrified to move here, um, but I grew up an athlete and I ended up playing uh, basketball and softball in college mm -hmm. and was just really the kind of kid that worked really hard at what I did and I wanted to do well at what I did. I never got in trouble mm -hmm. and um, I loved writing and speaking growing up. It was just something that was a really big passion of mine. I would if I wasn't playing a sport or playing outside, I was in my room writing in my journal or reading a book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what I absolutely loved. And then I remember being really little, being totally struck by um, the lack of equity in the world mm -hmm. and really processing that at a very early age mm -hmm. and practicing speeches like in the shower that I'd heard from Martin Luther King or it's Nelson so cool. Mandela. And so it was just always a part of me, this, this person who needed to write, this person who had this need to speak and help, you know, um, help just kind of like bridge the gap between all of our different worlds. There's always just been this internal flame that I needed to just constantly light. Mm -hmm. And spiritually, I grew up Catholic, um, but I never really felt home there. Mm -hmm. And so I've often struggled with what my spirituality is. And so that's been a big part of my journey. But once I was in college, I realized that um, I was gay mm -hmm. and I had, I was actually outed by an ex-boyfriend and I had kind of a tumultuous experience. So up until this point, pretty good life. I mean, I, I went through some tough deaths with friends who were in car accidents and had some moments mm -hmm. that were a little bit rough in high school um, that kind of woke me up to the, the very preciousness of life, I guess mm -hmm. I, could, I should say. Mm -hmm. And after coming out, um, well, after I was outed, I just, I had a really tough time with my spiritual community. They mm -hmm. rejected me. I had a hard time with my family mm -hmm. and it just set me on a different course for my life. In fact, after I told my family, my older brother said to me, Megan, you should probably leave Mississippi. It's not safe for you here. Mm -hmm. And I knew deep down he was right. I didn't want to leave, but I also knew I wasn't going to get the support I needed to heal there mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. So this was early 2003, 2004. Mm -hmm. And so I went on this journey and I left Mississippi. I ended up at, um, in Florida and then Miami mm -hmm. and left Miami and ended up in Colorado and Mm -hmm. was really on this spiritual journey of figuring out where I fit in mm -hmm. and starting to just trying to be okay with who I was mm -hmm. as a gay woman. So every new place that I went, I was very forthcoming about who I was and being gay and who I was spiritually. And so it was a little bit easier because I wasn't surrounded by people from my past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I got comfortable with myself in these environments that didn't have expectations of who I was. Mm -hmm. And then I got to a point, I think six years after I left Mississippi, where I got this vision of moving back to Mississippi and it just scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I did not <laughs> want to come back, but I, there was something stirring in my soul that needed to be healed. And I knew there were layers that if, I didn't come back and integrate and be a part of this culture again, that I wasn't going to be able to really love myself fully. 
And at that point, I think I felt strong enough to, to come back and ended up coming back in 2010. And when I got here it was so much harder than I anticipated. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. at the time, so my wife and I have been married for nine years. We've been together in for 15. She came back to Mississippi with me. Mm-hmm. And I remember hiding her from our landlord. Like I did not want him to know that there was another woman living with me. So knock on the door and I say, go upstairs. He (laughs) calls me on the phone. I say, go upstairs. Like I was absolutely terrified of being myself. Mm -hmm. And here Mm -hmm. I was thinking that I wasn't going to be that way. And so it was just, it's just been this journey. I'm still in Mississippi with my wife. We have a four and a half year old now, 13 years later. Mm-hmm. And it's just been this process of being okay with who I am spiritually as a gay woman, mm-hmm. as a person who just sees the world a little bit differently than most people here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's been kind of like this unfolding, this unraveling, this um, internal journey and external, I don't know opportunities to have hard conversations, Mm -hmm. be in the media, be a voice Mm -hmm. of compassion and trying to bridge the gaps between all of our different worlds. Um, So I think more than anything, my story has been about staying true to myself and staying in integrity with who I want to be. And Mm -hmm. I think that's just really hard to do as a human being. And so I've been very challenged by the culture here. And, um, I don't know, we've just kind of found ourselves along the way and my wife and I and my family, and not to say that there still aren't struggles. There are definitely still struggles, but mm-hmm. I, I love who I am now and I'm confident in, in what I bring to the table as a human being mm-hmm. on this earth. And so I'm really pleased with where I am now mm-hmm. and looking back 13 years ago, like just being so ashamed and having so much shame around that and just the whole journey, it's been, um, it's just been a process. And so, yeah, I've, there are so many gaps to fill in there, but that's kind of a brief overview. <laughs> what would you say to that little girl who is 13 years old now? Who was 13 years old? Like yourself, you mentioned yeah. when I was 13 years old, what would you say to yourself? Um, I think when I was 13, I still had a very, I had a lot of optimism and hope. And um, I saw the world, I just saw that life was on my side. Like Mm -hmm. just, you know, even though I was a part of a religion, I didn't necessarily feel like I really fit into, and I knew I was different than other girls my age. Mm -hmm. I, I think I still saw the best in everything. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like I've been wanting to get that little girl back. Uh-huh. You know, that's when I feel like I was almost my strongest. Mm-hmm. And when I got into high school and then college and started kind of like losing that, um, what is it, innocence mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think I've always strived to be her again. It's so beautiful, actually. Yeah. We met in the Forbes Coaching Council. You actually helped us a lot. I was uh, in the event where you were talking about public speaking and TEDx and all of that. You were amazing. I I absolutely like adore your story and how brave you are to live authentically. And this is why I opened with your story. But uh, you're the master of storytelling, actually. I do believe so. <laughs> so why why the storytelling is is so important? I think it's the thing that's really kind of saved me in mm-hmm. a lot of moments. Mm-hmm. I when we got back to Mississippi, how I started kind of crawling out of that shame was by sharing my experiences in a blog, mm-hmm. and I called it Beyond Labels. And it started creating conversations within myself and with my community online. Mm-hmm. And so it was a little bit of a safer space rather than one-on-one. Mm-hmm. And I, I did it from the perspective of just, this is my internal world, my experience, what I'm going through, what I'm struggling with, you know, what I see and what I'm, you know, what I'm perceiving. And it started just opening 
doors. And I started noticing that it was healing me Mm -hmm. to process Mm -hmm. this stuff, Mm -hmm. these experiences and these stories of mine. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting asked to like go on radio shows and uh, do speaking engagements and go on TV shows to have conversations with people who were different than me on the other side of the aisle with marriage equality. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I just use storytelling as my way of conversing, of my way of interacting with someone who was different because I just didn't want to point the finger. I didn't want to blame because I knew what that felt like. And Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be true to myself. And Mm -hmm. it was always really hard to go into those moments, Mm -hmm. being okay, being authentic. Mm -hmm. Um, But I saw the power of staying true to story. And I saw the power of staying true to my experiences Mm -hmm. because it kept opening doors and it kept opening doors in my heart. It kept opening um, opportunities for conversations with Uh, local clergy and city council. And, and so there was just kind of like this path that, that Mm -hmm. kept weaving its way through story. Mm -hmm. And as I continued my career as a writer and speaker, Mm -hmm. I just fell in love with it because I saw how it was changing me. I saw how it was changing my community. I saw how it was changing the people in my life and our relationships. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I just fell in love with it. And so to me, it's one of the very few tools I feel like we can use to approach Mm -hmm. difficult conversations or difficult moments or challenges that we might be facing in our world, Mm -hmm. because how else can we understand each other's perspectives without actually sharing our experiences? I don't know any other way, honestly. So that's, you know, as, as I've gone on in my career, I have found that that's where my place is Mm -hmm. and whether it's working with speakers or, or authors or people who are going to be interviewed, whatever it may be, Mm -hmm. you know, telling a solid story that has all of the components of vulnerability and authenticity. Mm -hmm. That's where the power is. Mm -hmm. And so I love helping people navigate what that is for them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, back to that event, I remember how I felt because when you speak, I can feel the honesty and your kindness. And I didn't hesitate one second to reach out to you and to oh, actually connect so with you, you to did. invite you and to invite you. you to this show. Truly, uh, the energy which you have, it's incredible. And I'm not surprised that you were on so many stages and now helping people to do the same. So thank you for being here with me. Well, Truly. thank you. And I have been, you know, when we first initially talked, Mm-hmm. Your story, I've thought of your story so many times. <laughs> I mean, so many times. But Just if you think about journey, it, it's you know. it's a kind of similar thing. It was different, very different, mm-hmm. but it was the path to my own authenticity. Right. It's it's this it's yeah. a very similar journey, actually. You know, yeah. feeling like you you don't fit until I stepped up and, you know, went online and built everything online to connect with people who are in alignment with my core values. Right. So, it, yeah. yeah, we have a lot in common. You yeah. recently published a book. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? It's a lot about everything that I just talked about. It's mm-hmm. called Held, it's called Held and Free. Mm-hmm. And the subtitle is coming out of your story. And it's all about vulnerable sto- storytelling, but the the book is my memoir. Mm-hmm. And so I tell this extended story of the ups and downs of everything that I've just talked about, my spirituality, you know, accepting myself in the process of using storytelling when I came back, like what I just explained um, to you to kind of to heal and, and share. Mm-hmm. And um, so it goes from my childhood to present day. Um, but it's not a very long book. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's not super, super long, you know, mm-hmm. it's 250 pages, um, but it's separated in three parts, um, mm-hmm. own, share, connect. And so own is all about self-acceptance and that phase of self-acceptance for me and what that was like, and then sharing my stories and the importance of that. And then the connecting is, you know, like maintaining that connection to self and connection to others Mm -hmm. through those first few steps. And so I separate my stories into those three sections to to make it, you know, a little more compelling and make sense. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but it's all about the, the power of storytelling and how it's really changed my life. And, and it most probably changes lives of everyone who, who, you know, encounter you because when we hear what you went through and you came back for me, that's absolutely courageous. And I guess it's, it's a kind of connected with forgiveness. Um, yeah. right. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, yeah. what do you think about the power of forgiveness? Um, you know, I want to say too, like when I decided to come back, mm -hmm. I don't know if I said this before, I really didn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. I just knew I had to, like, there was something in my soul that knew that if I, if I didn't come back, that I wasn't going to, you know, live the life, a fulfill, a totally fulfilling life. Like mm -hmm. I just, I knew that. And, and I was terrified, terrified of coming back. Mm -hmm. I did not want to be here. I didn't want to face everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I think once I got here you're speaking about forgiveness I mean it was all about forgiveness it was you know having those conversations with my family members in the book there's these letters that I exchanged with my mom mm -hmm. where I get to a point in my journey of being back in Mississippi and I'm like mom you and I need to talk about my coming out day mm -hmm. and I know we best we communicate best through writing and so I'm going to write a letter to you about what my experience was like. Mm -hmm. You write a letter to me about what your experience was like. Mm -hmm. Let's exchange the letters and then let's have a conversation. And luckily I have a mom who's open to growth and change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and that's what we did. And I discovered through the letters that she was just really terrified for what I was going to go through. And she shut herself down mm -hmm. and her, emotionally shutting herself down felt like I wasn't being accepted. I wasn't being seen and I couldn't access her. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't get support from her. So I took it as rejection in a lot of ways. There's a lot of miscommunication with no words mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and exchanging those letters allowed for forgiveness to happen, allowed us to see things from each other's perspectives in a different way. Mm -hmm. And it allowed us to move on. Exactly. And I think forgiveness in instances with people who you really love and want to have a relationship with, you have to work at it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for those who, you know, they're not going to say they're sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and the people, you know, you don't necessarily want to have a close relationship with forgiveness is very different. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. that it's almost like you have to forgive yourself to your attachment. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it's, you know, there's so many facets of forgiveness. I think we could probably spend hours talking about it. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's always just a very personal experience, depending on the situation mm -hmm. and depending on the person and the relationship and what I want. Mm -hmm. And if they're willing to have that relationship and do the work with me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's um, a, another thing about forgiveness is that I think storytelling helps us through that process. Exactly. If we can put our hearts on the table and be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Then we often walk away satisfied, no matter the response. And I found exactly. that to be true for me. Yes. So, yeah, I don't know. I think I could probably talk about forgiveness for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you what can. about you? What do you like, think? Like the stage is yours. Well, yeah. you know, the, the greatest thing I learned a few years ago was that from a person, we kind of feel we need uh, to forgive and we don't get yeah. the forgiveness, Yeah, we can actually visualize like we did. But the greatest job is to forgive ourselves and to let it go. I agree. And I agree. That was uh, life-changing for me. Yeah. Because it mm. was one of my parents. And, you know, he never said anything, but I'm in peace with myself and in my heart. I love that. It just gave me chills all over my body. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the power of storytelling, I learned from the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. And it is, it's, we make it complicated and it's really simple. It's really, really simple. Sometimes mm -hmm. some people just can't find the words, you know, and most right. probably the pain they hold is the reason why they behave the way they do. 
Absolutely. So, yeah. The, our yeah. job is to forgive them and forgive ourselves and to find our own path. Right. And, you know, both you and I are witness of that story in our lives. So, yeah. yeah. And it's, yes, it's a great thing to share with the world. Yeah. Um, tell us a little yeah. bit about your business. I, I'm truly impressed. And, and again, like you, you captivated me, uh, with everything that you know about public speaking and everything that you shared with us. Would you like to talk about that a little bit? Sure. I'm, um, yeah, mostly I've done speaking and writing and initially I started my career out doing like business coaching and just life coaching and that kind of stuff. And, I found along the way that I really love speaker coaching. Mm -hmm. And so that's all I do now is just speaker coaching um, along with, you know, my writing and, and my own speaking. I do keynote speaking and I'm very focused on that right now too. But I, I work with um, executives. I work with scientists. I work with athletes. I work with, mm -hmm. you know, coaches, whoever has a speaking engagement coming up, it doesn't matter who you are. I, I love to help people integrate their stories into mm -hmm. their speeches and making sure everything flows really well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the bulk of my work is, is scripting, it's prepping people, it's getting people ready for the stage. Mm -hmm. As a result of my speaking experience and working with other people, Mm -hmm. um, working with bureaus and agencies. I've learned a lot about the industry over the years mm -hmm. and have picked up just tips and tricks. And mm -hmm. I've learned that the industry is tough to break into. And I've learned that you have to continue to grind and continue to work. And I've seen what has worked for other people. I've seen what hasn't worked for other people. And so mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like to keep that information to myself. So I'm like open to share that with Mm -hmm. with others, but I've just learned a lot over the years about mm -hmm. how to market yourself and how to mm -hmm. stay true to yourself in the market mm -hmm. and, um, how to promote yourself and what to use to promote yourself. So I'm very open about, um, what that takes mm -hmm. and I'm happy to always share that information that I've learned over the years, but the bulk of my work really is just the the speaker coaching mm -hmm. and working with people, helping them get ready for, mm -hmm. for gigs or a Ted talk or whatever it is. And public speaking is, is a very, I, I found it to be a very, first of all, interesting thing. And mm -hmm. second of all, you know, you can positively impact a lot of people, as I say, at once, Absolutely. right? Exactly. When you are yeah. at the stage and there are like hundreds of even thousands of people, uh, the greatest impact that I have ever made was just telling my story. Yes. It wasn't what I know. It wasn't, you know, my education, what I do, my business. No, it was simply my story. And people yep. connect emotionally and then we can build from that point to much, you know, larger things and projects and anything in life right i yeah. love public speaking you see english is not my native language but i gave myself a chance to be on the tedx <laughs> and and to speak and i did it yay good for you I, and it was like wow i really did this so That's yes amazing. from a fear of using you know a second language to yeah. actually being on a stage and doing TEDx and being on TV in USA, it was it was a huge thing for for a little That's girl amazing. from a small European country, you know. So I like to share that so people can see it's possible, yeah. and when they see it's possible, they will give themselves a chance to actually try, you know. And knowing yeah. you as an expert can help every other step along the way. How <laughs> <laughs> right? So well, we the are biggest. <laughs> the biggest thing that I tell people too, and you, you kind of, you, you hit the nail on the head when you said all of that is just like getting to a place where your presence and who you are mm -hmm. is what matters most when you're standing on a stage. Like yes. you don't even have to say anything, mm -hmm. but then sharing your story, mm -hmm. right? That's what compels people. And that's what helps us understand ourselves more and each other more. And it's the most powerful thing you can do, but just being who you are on stage and like being in that is mm -hmm. the most important part of being a speaker. Yes. And if you can do that, the words come. Yes. yes. But the words much matter much less than someone's presence. 
Yes, yes. Today I published a video about like, if you don't know what to say when you are creating content, just allow the universe to put words in your mouth. Yes, and, and just, I love it. Or just don't say anything. And and the half of the video, I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because I really didn't That's know so what awesome. to say. <laughs> I know? love it. If someone would like to work with you, what's the best way for them to find you, reach out to you? Um, my website, meganonan.com, M-E-A-G-A-N-O-N-A-N.com. I'm also on my socials. I like Instagram mm -hmm. and Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a big TikTok person. <laughs> I don't even have a TikTok account. Like I was like, I do, but I don't know why, because I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just didn't find myself there you know yeah, it's still yeah. hanging like an idea that I should have it but I don't <laughs> right right there's so much noise there that I have a hard yes. time with it yes but um yeah I mean I you know there's something for everyone right and I think mm -hmm. you just have to pick the ones you like and stick with them yes um but yeah that's the easiest way my website's probably the best way it's great. Thank you so much for being my guest. I, I truly, truly enjoyed and I hope you did too. Absolutely. Always love hanging out with you. Wonderful. And see you soon. Bye-bye.